Once upon a time in the far, far lands of Milan, an old lady finds a little baby in her cauliflower field and decides to call him Dodo. A beginning that may sound as an old-fashioned fable is in fact the introduction of today's discussion of the Vittorio De Sica's movie, Miracle in Milan. Vittorio De Sica was born July 7, 1901 in Sora, Lazio, Italy, but grew up in Naples and started out as an office clerk in order to raise money to support his so poor family. Heart. While still in his teens, he joined a stage company which increasingly drew him toward acting for the camera. By the late 1920s, he started to work on movies, mostly light comedies, and eventually turned to directing in 1940. Vittorio De Sica, along with directors Roberto Rossellini, Luchino Visconti, and Federico Fellini, helped establish the Italian neorealist film movement. Characterized by stories about the poor and the working class surviving in the rubble of post-World War II, Italian neorealism strove to make art out of everyday life. Between all his films, we remember his fifth movie, The Children Are Watching Us, 1944, in which he revealed unsuspected depths and a very sensitive touch with actors, especially children. Shushine, 1946, Bicycle Thieves, 1948, which won special Oscars before the foreign film category was officially established, and Miracle in Milan, 1951. Just before he died, he made another masterpiece, The Garden of the Finzi Contini's, 1970, which won him his final Oscar. Filmed largely on location and with non-professional actors, Italian neorealism can be seen in today's movie, Miracle in Milan, a film which not only abandons pretenses of reality, but embraces the impossible, mythical and supernatural. The story of Miracle in Milan, originally titled Totò the Good-Hearted One, is about a little baby, Totò, found in a cauliflower field by an old lady, Lolotta. She dies when Totò is still young, which forces him to be raised in an orphanage. Here, he will grow up physically, but his mentality will always remain immature. Therefore, years later, when he leaves the institution with no belongings and a place to live, he naively approaches the life of the homeless. Everything starts with an homeless man who tries to steal his bag, and before we can even notice, he becomes part of a shanty town in the outskirts of Milan. His pure heart will rule the improvement of this place and will fight to keep it from the selfishness of the businessman, Moby, and the police. As the title says, there's something miraculous about this movie, something that reminds us of a fairy tale. It is the magical dove. The element of the incredible dove descended from heaven turns the whole story into a fairy tale for adults. It not only helps Toto to win the battle against the police, but most importantly, brings a light and comedian tone to the theme of dualism between rich and poor presented by De Sica. This stone is set from the very beginning along with a fantastic and supernatural narration. Lolotta is the character who helps to build up this mood a few minutes from the very start. She comes back into the house and sees the milk spilled all over the floor, and instead of getting mad at Toto for not paying attention to the pot, her reaction is to place a few miniature trees and houses on the floor and say to him, this is the earth. The innocence and purity of this action links the concept of the fairy tale and the trust in the human heart to Toto's visionary. He will be able to see the bright side in everything and everyone, regardless of their social class or individual psychology. This almost exaggerated positive approach to life represents the core of the film. Being able to find joy and happiness in the smallest and simplest things is what characterizes the good characters throughout the movie. The iconic scene of the beggars being excited and cheerful about a ray of sunshine is what better shows this concept. Guarda, 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 guarda
While on one side we have the protagonist, Toto, followed by the poor represented as the ones who deserve more and better, on the other hand, we find Moby as the antagonist, supported by the police represented as the heartless puppets. This dualism never really explodes into the moralizing of good against evil or into the complete denigration of one group. Instead, both sides are represented under a comic light and they are put in contrast just to show their diversities in their fullness. The funny and supernatural tone characterizes every single one of these diversities, because the Sika's goal was not to create a documentary on how real-life beggars deal with the police and vice versa, yet to create an enjoyable fairy tale inspired by real-life people and situations brought to their exasperations. A moment which encloses this concept is when the beggars are using the magical dove to fight the police. The result is a scene which shows the dualism between the two groups while still maintaining its hilarious and light tone. The greatness of both scenes is to be able to send deeper life concepts and meanings while portraying behavioral dynamics in a comic and almost cartoony way. The neorealistic influence is what sets the base for their development. From actors who were real-life beggars, as the Sika song revealed in an interview, to the use of the Milanese dialect along with mostly short and simple dialogue, Italian neorealism is deeply enclosed in this film. With all this being said, spoiler alert! The peak of the movie is definitely reached by the end. After arriving in the Milan main square, locked into the police wagons, the beggars and Toto are able to escape thanks to the magical dove. Toto turns the broomsticks of the street cleaners into flying brooms, and one after another, the beggars begin to fly away behind Toto. Leading the pack, he rides into the sky of the afterlife, toward a land free from death and class divisions. This happy ending holds a hope for the existence of a better parallel reality, which shifts the concept of the fairy tale from moral fable into the realm of the marvelous. The whole fantastic tone escalates into something irrational and close to magic. Miracle in Milan, which won the grand prize at the 1951 Cannes Film Festival and was named Best Foreign Film by the New York Film Critics, is one of Vittorio De Sica's gems that is important to know nowadays for its incredible, neorealistic and magical touch.